massive butt. <laughs> Kenzie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this Sarah Sanderson costume from the original 1993 movie Hocus Pocus. I'm going to show you how I made this costume from start to finish. It was a whole long process but without further ado let's get into the process. We're going to begin our Sarah Sanderson costume journey with the fabrics. So that's going to entail picking the right fabrics and textures based on the reference pictures that I used and dyeing them to be the right colors because just because you found something that's the right color doesn't always mean it's the right texture. So for me, I'm a texture over color person. So I'll just take the L and I will dye it as many times as I need to, to get it to where it needs to be to work for my costume. I searched the internet far and wide for the perfect vertical lace fabric and I ended up finding this pretty good option on Amazon. So I will link that in my storefront. These are the dyes I used on it. It's a cotton, so it took it really, really fast. I dunked it in and it just went and sucked up all of the color. As you can see, this is after like a minute. And here's the rest of the fabric, which is a variety of different colors because I dyed it on different days. Wait, how did we get here? The original fabric was a white chiffon 100% rayon fabric that I got from Joanne. I will link the purple dyes that I used in the description below. So let's dump it in there. We'll see what happens. Okay, update. I'm coming to you live from the boiling sink. The fabric for the cloak was too big to fit in the boiling pot, so now it's boiling in the sink. And I have to stick my hand in there because it's time to come out, and that's the only way I know how to get rid of... That's the only way I know how to get rid of the dye, so... Mm. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I could cool it down with cold water. Still very hot. Still very hot. Okay. <gasps> now we need to rinse and put it in the washer. Try to use this in the washer with it. So we'll see if this actually does anything. Here we have the satin for the bodice in a variety of color options, two of which I already dyed. They both were originally the same color as that brown. One was a little darker, so I could have options. And here we have the bodice fabric options haul. So many, so many options. And here we have our witchy purples for the skirt and cloak. It's kind of a tie-dye look, which was obviously not intentional. That was a result of not having a big enough space to dye it in, but it ended up working out. And then we also have a cheesecloth, which is going to be shredded and put on top of the cloak as a little accent piece. The other two fabrics you will need is a whitish pink silk chiffon and a loose knit red fabric for the sleeve. And also this purple studing fabric for the hood. All right, so for the cloak, this is just a pattern I used. I will put a picture of it here or link it down below. I loosely followed the directions for the cloak and then added my own flair to it. And that's what we have here. Okay, so I don't know if I have enough fabric for the cape, so I have to figure out how long I need it to be, so I'm just gonna lay next to it. Excuse my Adam Sandler shorts vibe. I got hot and I was wearing jeans. But here we go. <laughs> Putting it to me to start here. To go all the way down to my feet. Is that, is that long enough? Let's wiggle up. I feel like it should start here. Put this thumb here. We're just gonna drape on here and see how it looks. This is what I like to call the fast and loose method. It's not gonna be even, but it's gonna be awesome. It looks so good. And then we just sew it all together. Step sign, ma'am. Here's the situation. You can see I put that triangle in. Okay, make it wider. Oh, it's long. So obviously the opening for my neck is way too big, so I'm just doing a very loose stitch and then I'm pulling it through to gather it to the exact right length I need. I'm cutting the hood and the little like hood skirt part that goes over the shoulders out of this purple suiting fabric, which was the only thing I didn't have to dye. I sewed that together, turned it inside out, and I am pressing it flat and crisp. And then I'm going to attach the cheesecloth, which is also gathered to the little hood skirt, and then attach the rest of it as such.
but I think when I, I wore this out trick-or-treating with my family, I kid you not, I probably spent 30 minutes the next day after it was raining. So the costume was soaking wet and then it's just caked in leaves on the bottom because it's like a raw edge. So all of that extra stringy things just collected leaves. And so I'm walking around in this, this skirt and cloak are already heavy. I'm walking around and I'm just like being pulled down by this now wet outfit that's like 13 yards of fabric and leaves caked to the bottom of it. But it was fine, it was worth it. So next we'll talk about the skirt and then last we'll leave the bodice because that's the most complicated part. So for the skirt, I tried to make the skirt twice. Originally I made the entire thing and I used a different fabric for the top fabric. Um, I used something that was probably more screen accurate, but because I was crunched for time, I, could, I couldn't use that because they didn't have enough when I ran out for an emergency fabric run at Joann's. They only had enough of this kind, which I ended up using. It's the same as the cloak fabric, but essentially I made it first and I was gonna put a zipper in it and I had sewed it all down to a waistband that I made and it had no stretch. And I was like, well, what the heck, where's the zipper gonna go? Because I don't want it to show anywhere. So then scratch that, undid everything and put it on elastic. Here is our beautiful red vertical lace. Don't even, don't even look at that purple one. I didn't end up using that one. But the other two fabrics are the white silk chiffon that I already showed you and a yellow version of the same purple rayon we're using for the skirt and the cloak. To give the skirt a lot of volume, we're doing the same gathering method with the loose stitch and then hand gathering it and sewing it down to the elastic. To get the little tuck in the front of the purple section of her skirt, I just pinned one section up, like literally probably an inch up, and sewed that into the seam when I was attaching it. Then to finish it off, I just cut upward on the lace to give it a shredded effect. I have a love-hate relationship with this beast here. So not only did I die about seven different color options for both of these pieces, I learned how to make a corset for the first time, so I'm I'm proud of myself. It doesn't fit super amazing, but you know, it's it's a corset and it gets the point across. I had started with a pattern that was kind of the shape I wanted because I'd never made a corset before, so I always want to have something to reference and to kind of understand the shapes and construction I want to do. So I cut those out and draped it on my uh, mannequin and then came up with my own pattern for that. Okay, here we go, pattern making. So I started with a little sketch to go off of, of what I want each of the pieces to look like. I then took a existing pattern, cut some pieces out that were kind of the right shape, and then went over with a pen to draw out where I actually wanted my final pieces to be. Once I had all of that done, this is what it looked like. I only did one half so I can make each piece the same size. And then I'm going to be cutting these out of muslin fabric. This is already muslin fabric, but I'm going to be cutting two pieces of each and then using that to sew onto the duck fabric, which is going to give the bodice stability in addition to being a spot where I can slide the boning between the duck and the muslin fabric. So with two versions of each piece cut out in each fabric, I'm ironing them to get rid of the wrinkles, then pinning them together, and then I'm gonna be doing a stay stitch to make sure that nothing moves before I figure out where I wanna put my boning channels. Since I'm doing patterning on the go slash fast and loose method, I have to cut out the armholes. So I sewed it all together and then drew it on my mannequin where I wanted the arm to actually be and then cut that out. My first attempted corset project would not be complete without trying to do boning channels. So I'm measuring the width that my boning is and I'm drawing in two lines that I will then sew slots for basically where I'm going to slide in the boning. So this is what that looks like after I did all of them. And then I'm going to be putting in the boning after I sew those channels down. So that's the reason for the duck fabric with the muslin fabric. I did not want to put channels that could be visible in the final fabric because there's beading. So it wouldn't allow for that. And also Sarah Sanderson's corset does not have visible boning channels, but it definitely has boning in it because that thing is very structurally sound. After finally picking my bodice colors, I cut all of the shapes out of the final fabric. Before I can sew anything together, I'm doing all the design work. So I'm just taking a chalk pen and a reference picture and loosely drawing how I want all of the vines and flowers to be. Next, we attach embroidery stabilizing paper and pick a thread. I'm doing all this embroidery on my sewing machine because I was crunched for time and I'm more comfortable with this than I am with my actual embroidery machine. 
I set my machine to a tension of 4, a stitch width of 1, and a stitch length of halfway between F and 0 on my machine. And these are all the other colors I'm using for the flowers. I'm doing the same method on the machine. I'm just twisting and making a circle out of it, going over it a couple times until I get a funky flower shape like I want. And I'm using the same settings except I'm using a stitch width of 7 instead of 1 for this. And then the last bit of decor is the beading. I'm using a clear thread and hand beading all of this onto the middle of the flowers using seed beads. With the top fabric ready to go, I'm going to attach it to all of the individual pieces first, and then I'm going to sew the corset together once I have everything stitched down because I want to make sure that all the decoration is laying exactly where I want it to be. Next, I'm going to be making this actually a functional corset by attaching grommets where each one of these pins is placed. It's about 10 per side, but give or take the sizing of your corset. We're on the home stretch. Now we just have to make the piping and the sleeves. So first we'll start with the piping. I'm using cording and I'm using a special cording foot on my sewing machine with some of the scrap fabric to make a nice crisp pipe that I'm going to be attaching to the edges of the corset. So I'm just pinning that down and I'll be using the same cording foot to make that through the sewing machine and attach it, cutting off the excess, and then we're going to hand sew the other half down so it doesn't show. For the straps, since there is no boning, I'm just using a piece of duck fabric and attaching the piping to the outside in the right shape. Then I'm putting the final fabric over top and I will be turning this inside out, which low-key took forever and really hurt my fingers, but it was worth it and it turned out great. Then flashback to the sleeve fabric, which I got wet and used chip clips on my clothing dryer to get the wide weave. And then I'm going to be using my same cording foot to stitch that to the straps. My fingers were injured for several days after that beading process, but it's it was worth it. Okay, and then the last but not least, the bonus section is going to be the accessories. For the shoes, Sarah, of course, has actual witch boots, but I just used some ankle-length black booties that I already had, and then paired that with a thigh-high fishnet that I got on Amazon. It's just a wine color with a lace at the top. I went on a stick-finding mission and immediately found a perfect log that would work. It might be a little thick, but it's the right shape. So I enlisted my dad to help me using this saw thing to cut off the end and cut off all the rest of the twigs. Then I took some dried grass, also from my parents' house, and just tied that on with string and some hot glue. Sarah's broom has the distinct forked end with the two broom ends, so make sure you find a stick that has a Y shape at the end. The finishing touch was adding some spare leather I had lying around. I glued one end on and then glued the other end to itself, and then went ahead and tied twine around a bunch of times to make a thick closure with a bow at the end and then glued that down. I also wanted to make a replica of her necklace, so here are some supplies I got from Michaels. I'm using metal wire instead of string for the necklace because I just didn't trust string not to break and spill the beads everywhere, or more like I didn't trust myself to tie the knot correctly, and I also didn't have closures, so I just twisted the metal at the back of my neck. Um, that wraps up the costume. If anyone has any questions, just let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more cosplay content. It's what I do with all of my free time, so definitely if you like watching these videos, there will be many more to come in the next year. I'm planning to do five major cosplays, still deciding what they're gonna be because, you know, it takes time and I need time to be a real person. But so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Come back for more cosplay content and uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, but thanks again, bye.